interview room. We'll be joined uh, a little bit later by the winning owner and breeder, Morton Fink. But we're very pleased to have with us now the winning trainer of Wise Dan, the Breeders' Cup mile winner, Charlie Lapresti. Charlie, congratulations. Just uh, an, an incredible ending to what's been an incredible year for this horse. How have you kept him at such a high level? Uh, it's kept him so good for so long and to deliver a, a, a track record performance like this. Well, he's just a super horse. You know, he really is a super horse. Every time I work him, every time I do something with him, he amazes me. And I've tried not to work him too often and too fast. Uh, at Saratoga, I realized how fast he really was when we started to work him on the turf. Some of you have seen him work there. And so we don't put a lot of works into him in between races. I mean, sometimes you'll look at the works and maybe they'll look a little spotty and people think, I wonder what's wrong, but he's just a phenomenal horse. And that's why I ran him in the Shadwell. I knew that if I didn't run him in the Shadwell, I would have to work him two, maybe three times. And I knew the kind of works that he was gonna turn in. So I thought it better to do that, and it would be easier on him to get him to this spot. I only had one work in between. You're based in Kentucky. You've shipped successfully with this horse and others to Woodbine and New York. W were there any added or extra challenges involved in, in coming out west with your horse? No, there really wasn't, because if you look at going to Woodbine, it took us like 12 hours to get there. We were in a stall to stall in about six hours here. Um, He's just a good shipper. He's a good horse. He's got a real level head. He's just really easy to deal with. And as wonderful as a Breeders' Cup victory has to be, from a trainer's standpoint, do you get uh, an added thrill from not a Breeders' Cup record performance, but a Santa Anita track record performance? Well, it probably it really hadn't hit me yet, but it, it, it's an incredible accomplishment, but, but it's really the horse. I mean, he's just an incredible horse. I mean, He's done things in the morning that you just don't believe. I mean, he's just a dream come true. You, you work all your life to have a horse, your life to get a horse like this. Okay, questions in the room for Charlie. We'll start with Steve. I'll pass the mic over. Charlie, congratulations. And uh, I got to ask immediately after last year's just heartbreaking loss in this race to Court Vision, talk about that reaction and, and the redemption here a year later. Well, it was hard with Tour Allure last year. I mean, but I wasn't disappointed in my horse. He ran a really good race. He didn't get the best trip in the world, as everybody knows. And to come and win this race, it, it's just incredible. It, it kind of, it eases the pain a little bit. Now I'm trying to think of what am I gonna do next year and keep these two horses apart? Well, and as it turns out, you, you end up having Wise Dan to campaign forward. And it, it really is remarkable given given the situation that you would have a, whor a different horse uh, this quickly and, and come right back uh, to compete again? Well, yeah. You okay there, Gary? Oh, here, Gary Dumpson, here. We're just pausing. We're gonna. We're happy to be joined by Mr. and Mrs. Fink, the winning owners and breeders of Wise Dan. And uh, I'm sorry, Charlie. I, were you in the middle of a thought? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Mr. Morton Fink and your wife, congratulations. Um, this is a, as we just got through uh, mentioning to Charlie, not just a Breeders' Cup win, but a track record performance yes. a Santa Anita track record you know this track has a lot of history behind it can you can you discuss your your uh, your feelings of accomplishment and pride in having not just owned but bred this this uh, outstanding horse it's very hard to put it in words but when you're in the business for 40 years and you know you can do everything right and have the best of everything and then you get a bad trip and you lose with this horse it's almost, this is crazy to say, it's almost impossible to do that to him. As soon as he sees the daylight, he's gone, and nobody will beat him. Nobody. Charlie, is, is it fitting that the year has wound up this way? Because he has been so spectacular all year long. So is this a, a fitting end to a great story in the chapter of Wise Dan? 
Oh, yeah. I mean, it couldn't have ended any better. You know, I mean, I, I knew he was going to run good today. Every time he runs, I know he's going to run good. But I never thought he would run this good. I never, I, I never expected him to break a track record. Uh, gentlemen, um, I know you're going to savor this win for quite some time, but uh, being a gelding, I, we don't have to worry about why is Dan going off to stud. Have you allowed yourself to contemplate what 2013 might hold for him? No, that's a long time away. Right now, I think it's only fair to give him a rest. He's done more than any horse could be expected to do. He's entitled to a rest. Charlie and I uh, can't give enough credit to Charlie. Without Charlie, we wouldn't have this horse. Anyhow, uh, Charlie and I both believe he's entitled to a rest, and that's what he's going to get. We haven't gone any farther than that. We know in this business, it's one race at a time, no long-range plans. That's one thing Mr. Fink and I, he's always said, we'll take it one race at a time, and that's kind of what we're doing right now. Right. Mr. Fink, can you just speak to um, small breeders everywhere who may not have a huge broodmare band, but you've proven that you can have success with about the smallest one there is. So. <laughs> yes, uh, I've been involved with through Caroline Farm mostly with buying expensive horses, breeding expensive horses. But in this case, uh, I paid $29,000 for the mare. And uh, I had a season in uh, Wise Man's Ferry, who I was the managing partner when he ran, and I knew he was a good horse running, and not in breeding so far, as we all know. But uh, whoever we've bred her to, the horse comes out looking like her, and they all run. This is a, she's had uh, three stakes winners, uh, f I think five horses that earned over 150000 this is from a $29,000 mare. And uh, it should give people, you gotta be lucky. You can do things right, but you gotta be lucky too. And, and this horse is incredible. Charlie, could you, uh, in the absence of Johnny V, can you talk about Velasquez being added to the equation uh, with, with Wise Dan, John Velasquez? I'm sorry, I didn't know just talk about Johnny Velasquez and his addition to oh. the, the equation. Oh, Johnny, you know, Julian rode the horse, and he had to go to California to ride Never Retreat. He was committed to ride Never Retreat. And, you know, Mr. Fink and I talked about it, and we talked about who to get. I said, you know, I'd love to call Angel Cordero and see if Johnny would come ride the horse. And they came. They won the Clark on him. And Johnny, when he got off of him, he said, this is one of the best horses I've ever sat on. And I didn't know Johnny Velasquez very well at that time. And I thought, well, you know, he's just, he's, he's just telling me that. Angel said, no, he's not telling you that. He means it. He said, we'd go to China to ride that horse. Wherever he goes, we're staying with him. And, you know, when Graham put Animal Kingdom in this race, I was a little bit concerned. Some people said, well, you're going to lose Johnny now. I called Angel. I said, Angel, they're saying I'm going to lose you. He said, I told you I'll go to China with you to ride this horse. He said, we'll stick him with the horse. And the only reason he didn't ride him in the Shadwell, it was my fault because I, I was going to train him right up to the Breeders' Cup. And then I got to thinking about it, and I talked to Mr. Fink, and they were already committed in New York. And, and that's what good agents and that's what good jockeys do. They stand beside, behind their commitments. <clears throat> Mr. Fink, uh, you say you, you can't envisage Wise Dan ever being beaten. Speaking of Mr. Lepresky earlier in the week, he was talking about being a horse of a lifetime. We've had a horse of a lifetime in Great Britain for the last couple of seasons called Frankel. I know that. How, how do you think you would, you would get on against him? Uh, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, don't worry You're not going to go I'm, I'm not going to say. What Frankel has There's accomplished... There's a man back here, my... <laughs> what Frankel has accomplished, nobody can say anything negative about that. My God... It's a miracle what he's done. I, I'm not even going to think about how we do against Frankel. He's the best horse in the world. He's retired. We're never going to get a chance to run. So there's no point of thinking about that. And let me add, any time a horse, no matter where he runs, goes undefeated, that's a really good horse. Positively. Trainer Lepresti, congratulations on keeping Ways Dan so good for so long and you won the race in a manner that rewrote the record books in Santa Anita. Congratulations one more time. With Frankel's retirement, I want you to be aware of the fact 
you beat X celebration, possibly the top miler in Europe, and moonlight cloud is not a, an ordinary filly either. You have any plans of going to uh, Dubai or uh, put him on the international stage next year? You know, like Mr. F like Mr. Fink said, we're going to just enjoy this, give him some time off. You know, with horses, you never know. After a race like this, you go in the barn two days or three days from now, and he may have a problem. I don't. Hopefully, that's not the case. But uh, we really haven't. We haven't even talked about it. We just want to really enjoy this moment, and he's entitled to some time off. And you know, when when you travel abroad with horses like that, I mean, I think it knocks them out. You know, when you go to Dubai. It, it, it's going to knock him out and maybe we may want to go on and do what we did last year and stay here in the United States and go to Saratoga and Woodbine and but we'll, we'll just wait and see you know it, it, it's definitely an option but we have to talk about it I second that <laughs> uh, we obviously have a very important race yet to be run at yeah. Santa Anita do you think your hat Nothing is certain at this point, but do you think your hat is very much in the ring for Horse of the Year, regardless of what happens 29 minutes from now? I would, I would think it. Yeah, we're our hat's in the ring, Mr. Fink. Yeah, I I agree with that. I think he's accomplished an awful lot on every surface you put him on. People warned us it'd be dangerous to come here because this track uh, is different than he's ever. No, no change of track has ever stopped him, so we, didn't, we were not concerned about that. And do you think that versatility should count for something? I think it should. He's won on grass, on, on, on poly with records, on, on every surface. There's not a lot of horses that do that. Okay, well, we'll see what transpires in 28 minutes, but one thing is for certain, and that's that uh, Wise Dan just ran a terrific historic race here at Santa Anita. Charlie Lopresti, Mr. and Mrs. Fink, congratulations. Thank you very much. And continued success. We look forward to seeing him run next year. And so do we. Thank you Thank so you much, much for your kindness.